Before there was CT, there was an exam called pneumoencephalography in which the patient was strapped into a chair and air was injected into the spinal column. The patient was turned upside down and side to side so that the air would bubble up into the ventricles of the brain. X-rays were taken at all these different positions to try to detect a loss of symmetry in the ventricles of the brain, perhaps indicating the presence of a mass. This exam has been described as a form of torture, which caused the patient a great deal of pain and typically caused vomiting throughout the exam, as well as severe headaches afterwards. It is not an exam that you or I would want to have, but before CT, this was the only way to detect large cerebral masses. CT began with the pioneering work of two talented individuals, one a physicist and the other an engineer. Alan Cormack was a naturalized American physicist who was born in South Africa, where he studied physics at the University of Cape Town. He mainly worked on particle physics, but his side interest was on X-ray technology. And so here and there, as time allowed, he worked on the idea of how one could reproduce the inside of an object by measuring attenuation line integrals through the object. The invention of CT is perhaps most widely associated with Godfrey Hounsfield because he is the one that built an actual device on which humans could be scanned. He started his career in the Royal Air Force in Britain as a radio operator, but was so talented that he was quickly promoted to instructor and eventually they asked him to go and study to be an engineer. He led design teams at the EMI Central Research Lab outside London and became interested in computers and pattern recognition. He thought back to his early days of radar and how, with the knowledge of the signal bouncing back at you, one could identify an object. He began his work on the CT project in 1967 and the first patient was scanned using a prototype device on October 1st of 1971 at the Atkinson Morley Hospital in Wimbledon, England. For their independent efforts, which were done half a world apart, Cormack and Hounsfield were jointly awarded the 1979 Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine. The CT scanner could only image the head. The patient laid supine with his head inside the cylindrical acrylic tunnel, which contained a water-filled bag to avoid saturating the detector as x-rays passed through the peripheral portion of the head and through air. This is another one of our technologists, Susan Rantham, demonstrating how the patient was positioned in the scanner. This is a picture of the scan room containing a lot of large electronic devices and a teletype printer. The images from the system were captured using Polaroid film and an entire CT exam consisted of six such Polaroid images. This scanner was actually the first multi-detector CT system as it acquired two line integrals at each position of the detector and gantry using two different sodium iodide detectors. These six images taped to a film jacket holder comprised a complete CT exam of the head. The image on the left is from the first patient scanned. These images are of the same patient who was scanned once in 1973 and again in 2003 highlighting the remarkable difference in image quality that the changes in technology had brought over the period of 30 years. Considering the success of the Mark I head CT scanner, the next logical step was to develop a scanner able to image the entire body. Again, Godfrey Hounsfield worked closely with James Ambrose to translate this new technology into clinical practice. This is a photo of them with the first body CT scanner, which was installed in three locations in the U.S. Now we will look at some early images. Here is an early CT image of the abdomen, which although crude by today's standards, shows the interior cross-section of living patients. This had not been seen previously. Note the considerable amount of shading and motion artifacts. Here is an early image of the lung. The airways are not visible out to the edges of the lung. This is an example of state-of-the-art lung CT, shown here in the sagittal view. This was taken on a scanner capable of 250 micron image thickness along the z-axis. Here, the 20-second scan time is highlighted as a distinguishing feature of this fast CT scanner. 
Considering that the first EMI scanner took four and a half minutes to make one rotation around the patient, 20 seconds was pretty remarkable. Further, many patients could hold their breath that long, dramatically reducing motion artifacts. Here are early breast CT images, which are nothing like what can be produced today, which can visualize both masses and calcifications. 2006, Siemens introduced a dual source CT scanner, which provided 85 millisecond temporal resolution and 40 imaging of the heart, including visualization of the coronary arteries and the cardiac valves, viral CT the introduction of which restarted serious interest and research and development into CT technology. Introduced by Siemens under the direction of Dr. Willie Callender in 1991, spiral CT of blood vessels became common because the data could be smoothly acquired without stopping for patient breathing. Here is an example of a 3D rendering of a CT angiogram in the abdomen and the image shows the maximum coverage along the z-axis for a scan in that era. At that time, scanners had only one detector ring rotating around the patient. In 1998, scan speed was dramatically improved by having multiple rows of detectors. This began the era of multi-slice or multi-detector row CT and initiated what became known as the slice race, where manufacturers kept adding more and more detector rows and data channels until now we have scanners with 320 data channels and half millimeter thickness that can cover 16 centimeters of the patient along the z-axis in one gantry rotation. Today, the coverage available for CT and geography is far superior. In this exam, a technique called dual energy CT was used and with one click, the system is able to identify and turn off the calcium signal because the data processing done on the dual energy data sets could identify which voxels contained calcium and which contained iodine. Alvarez and Makovsky led pioneering work in this field. This is a picture of a spiral CT bone fracture. This is the type of resolution that we can achieve in bones today. This image shows a fracture of the wrist acquired using a photon counting detector CT scanner. These cerebral angiogram images were acquired in the early 1990s. With dual energy CT today, we can remove the bone with a single click and look at the circle of Willis in this high resolution image. We can also look at the vasculature of the brain with images of a quarter millimeter thickness. Here's a coronal image of the kidneys from the early days of spiral CT. This is a 3D rendered CT angiogram with coronal and axial images of kidney from 2016, where the use of decreased tube potential provided a 40 to 50% decrease in radiation dose while maintaining exquisite image quality. So what are the technologies that have allowed this reduction in dose? Some of the techniques have to do with the system hardware, such as beam filtration and beam shaping, which remove photons that will not contribute significantly to the image formation, but do contribute to the dose to the patient. Beam collimation, particularly for the multi-size CT scanners, continues to be an important part of the technology in order to preserve dose efficiency. Education and software tools have also become available to set up the scan acquisitions in a way that is appropriate for a specific patient and a specific diagnostic task. This has helped the community to titrate the doses to the lowest levels, which still preserve the diagnostic information and allow the radiologist to accurately perform a diagnostic interpretation. CT detectors have also improved dramatically with photon counting energy resolving quantum detectors on the horizon. The detector electronics, for example, have become much more stable and have much lower electronic noise levels. 
Recently, dose reduction efforts have focused primarily on how to create higher quality images or images with lower noise levels. Image denoising and iterative reconstruction techniques are now in widespread use, and the CT imaging field is poised to move into the era of machine learning and convolutional neural networks, which are going to take the doses down to a level that our predecessors could never have imagined. CT has certainly come a long way. It can image the entire body from head to toe in a matter of seconds. Anatomy is revealed in remarkable detail. And the doses used to acquire the data are in some cases, such as for low-dose chest CT screening, approaching those from conventional x-ray exams.